So I received a, an amazing email from somebody from England and I want to share what he said. I think people could learn from his experiences and these are one of the very insightful emails that I received, um, positive email that I want to share with people. So here it is. Now the title of the email says, hello I felt the need to email you so I guess it happened. It says, hello, I'm 30 years old and I live in England, UK. I stumbled across your video from a side link about Steven Seagal. I commented it and really wanted to email you but could not see how to through YouTube. I mentioned this in another video you posted ab about grading in martial arts. I also commented in that, including the previous comment. Not sure why, but what you said really had an effect on me. You touched on a few things that I hold strong opinions on. And seeing a few of your videos, it all came firing out like vemin. Anyway, I noticed in the description to one of the videos there was an email address. Hence, this junk you have received from me as a result. It has been compiled with chunks of the comments left on the videos on YouTube. Very long email, so I'm going to keep continuing. There's a lot of good things to say. As these comments on your videos have grew into a long-winded ramble about not much in particular. It has made it for a kind of emotional outburst in the form of a long and confusing email message. My apologies. I could have just said I like your videos, but I guess I got carried away. Hopefully something I have said has some relevance. Note I have typed this on a tablet so it's difficult to read and keep track of exactly what the hell I'm rambling about. Alright, so here it goes. Firstly, if I got, I've got real problems within with self-esteem, confidence, identity, emotions, and it stems from me feeling like I ain't shit because of what Western civilization has done to me. I'm trying to undo what it has done after 30 years of being on the planet. I'm not a happy person and do not need help, but the help available comes from the minds of the people that create these issues in the first place. I found that medical treatment for depression was almost pointless. It just sweeps the issue under the carpet. Next, I realize, realize when I f feel the need to comment on these things that I have a lot of passion inside me that really comes to the surface. I really wish I knew how to use it on positive ways to improve my life and people around me. Sadly, the fact you require a degree to do anything in life reduces me to a frustrated person trapped in a situation that gives me little joy. Next. You talking about the grading system really touched on something I've found annoying since getting back into martial arts and also something that dominates most actions in life in general. The obsession and overemphasis on achievement. As an example, members at a local karate club and in particular the karate teacher were asking me constantly, are you grading next month? When are you grading? Do you know what you need to know for your next grade? I don't give a shit what color the best is. It's blue, the same grade I got when I was about 12 years old. What is being taught is what you need to know to pass your next grade and little else. That isn't martial arts. Next. I've been away from the martial arts again now for over a year after regaining an interest, but the desire to get back to training is building. But due to a lower back issue that has had me off work for five weeks on sick leave, it now also has me sidelined from any martial arts, which is very frustrating. I'd really like to get back to some of it. I started this job I have now around 15 months ago, and I hate it for various reasons. It saps all my energy, so I have had none left to get to any of the classes I was go doing before I started the job, but I feel completely stuck in it. What makes me bit more frustrating is that the job in question has hurt my back to the point where I cannot do things I like to, like to, yet I still hear my parents say to me that the job is the important thing. Ha ha. Next. I read a lot of teachings that give me, give my existence some sort of temporary feeling of calm, and I'm going to Japan in April, which is a dream come true. Zen temples, old traditions, etiquette, I hope it will help me. Next. I watched the whole video made about MMA. You got you make a lot of sense. Sadly, the Budo spirit of long ago has gone. Now, as martial arts spread westward across the globe, they were reduced to nothing more than 
one, a competition because winning is all that matters in life, and two, a business. Just like films that show people being shot in the face, beat up, damaged, Western society has real problems and has done for a, a long time. Humans in general have problems. 150,000 plus, 150 million plus people killed in the 20th, 20th century alone by other people. Something is very wrong. I did karate as a kid and quit. In the last few years, I have regained interest for it. Since then, I've gotten into karate, Aido, and Aikido. I am very into Eastern f teachings, philosophy, spirituality, Zen, Taoism, Buddhism, all that stuff. I went back into the martial arts from that angle from having an interest, a passion for the Eastern way of life, the death, the insight. Anyway, after a tough year or two, I decided... Going back to the karate club I used to attend over 17 years ago would give me something different to focus on. And when I did go back, to say it had changed was an understatement. Weeks went by as I tried to relearn things and get into it again. And all the sense I seemed to go on about was MMA. MMA this, MMA that, and a karate Wadu Ryu class. It's seeping into everything, main event, big money, big talk, big business, and it's teaching kids growing up that beating people to a pulp can make you popular. Sad. Martial arts and Aikido, which I has have a deep interest in, part martial art, part religion. It becomes part of you in daily life, life, not just something you do a few hours a week. It should teach you about yourself and other people, make you humble and gentle, teach you discipline, self-control, self-realization appreciation i guess it depends what the words martial arts means to you to many it is a western thing that came from the east and it's about fighting if you don't know the difference between self-defense and fighting then clearly people are not getting the message so goal is a walking contradiction and it's sad to see someone you have respect for embarrass themselves in the way he has perhaps hollywood made his ego grow to the point where he just lost it seeing him at ufc events was just well very strange. What was he thinking? Compares to go to Christian Tisler. If you got all of that, I appreciate you taking the time to read my message. Your videos have good insight, and I'm glad I found them. All right, so this person is very um, deep, very truthful, very honest, and um, you know this is a part of developing in, in the spirituality within the martial arts and just within life in general and um, he had a lot of insightful things to say um, and I just want to comment just on a few things that he said um, it's interesting that he mentioned this where he says um, you know the problems that he has with self self esteem confidence identity emotions um, feeling like he ain't shit because of what Western society has done to him. Um, and he says, he said he's not a happy person and do need help, but the help available comes from the minds of people that create these issues in the first place. So basically, he's talking about like the blind trying to lead the blind and it's not going anywhere. In order to get true help, you need to encounter somebody that, you know, is not blind. You know, um, and that's hard to find, because who do you know for sure actually knows the way and lives by it, actually is enlightened, you know, and awakened, and can guide people towards the way, how do you know, you know, um, and he mentioned the medical treatment for depression is pointless, because it's like, Sweeping it onto the carp under the carpet, and it's very true. And eventually, all that mess is gonna accumulate, and it's gonna make things worse. You know, a lot of these people that are antidepressives, they essentially could end up committing suicide and doing horrible things. Maybe like shooting and killing a bunch of people. Um, just doing horrible things. It's not good to be in medication. Uh, we need to find. The real medication, the depression, the true medication, and that's meditation. Um, let me see. Now he mentions 
Sadly, the fact that you require a degree to do anything in life reduces me to a frustrated person, trapped in a situa situation that gives me little joy. Now, I think that is um, partly true to the effect of where to profit, to profit from something that you love to do, you typically do need a degree. But nobody can stop you from doing what you love, not for profit, but just for the pure joy of doing it. You know, so, like, you, when you do things for free to help people, people can't really stop you from doing that. Or, you know, not even just to help people, but just to express yourself. You like to write poetry, then go ahead and write poetry. You like to make music, make music, play music. You like to dance, dance. You like to play basketball, play basketball. Hey, you know, doesn't mean you'll be in the NBA, but you could still play basketball. You know, like, do what you love to do. You want to practice martial arts, practice. You know, you, you, you want to share, share. You know, you want to write a book, write a book. You know what I mean? Like, we don't need a degree to do what we want to do, but typically, in order to profit, to make money, you may need a degree, you know, in most cases. If you want to be a doctor, you want to be a lawyer, then you need to be, make a degree to get into that type of field. You know, but doesn't. But if you want to learn to heal people, you can still study how to heal people and then share that information to people. You know, not as a profession, but just as like it's just a part of you. You know, like you know something that could help people, and then you could share it with them. You know, um, it's just. Turning things into professions essentially is what makes it very competitive and that's why there's all those degrees um, that separate people to see like, you know, it's the society's way to try to decipher between who's qualified to teach and who's not. But essentially somebody like Buddha transcends degrees. He's just, he just, uh, you know, awakened one day, had some deep realizations and then he started to teach. It's just nobody could give you a degree for being awakened, basically. It's just something that happens from within, and then you just head towards the way, and then you share your way with others. Now he mentions about the grading system. And he says, you know, the obsession and overemphasis on achievement, and I agree to that. You know, it's just, it's a bunch of, you know, it's, 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 that's not the way, you know, of the true way that I see. Like these, these ways of people seeing things as achievements, people should just enjoy the moment for what it is and just do things that they love to do, opposed to feeling, oh, I, I just, I'm just doing this just to, just to get, just to get it over with. You know, that's not, that's not the way. You know, it's something where what you do should be something that you're doing because you love to do it. And there's no, nothing else that you want out of it other than the joy that you're feeling in the moment that you're doing that activity. So he mentions, you know, members of the karate club in particular, the karate teacher asking me constantly, are you grading next month? When are you grading? You know, that, that to me, I'm really glad that I got rid of those ranks. You know, I, it was an experimentation that I went through, and then um, it didn't work out. And now that we're going back to the way where there really is not rank, it's, it's very peaceful, it's very calming, it's very creative and expressive, and I enjoy that. And... You know, it's rare to ever be able to find a school that doesn't ha have, you know, that doesn't force people into a ranking system. You know, it's like going to a school where they don't grade you A, B, C, D, F, whatever. It's just, you just go into school just to learn. It's like going to a library almost. Like where there's just so much information and knowledge available to learn from. There's, 
no need to get have grades and com you know compete with the next person that's reading in the library it's just you know for you to go there and receive the benefits of knowledge you know so there's a huge benefit to you know to liberating yourself from this ridiculous ranking system Okay, what's next? So this is what he says right now. Um, he said, martial arts spread westward across the goal. They were reduced to nothing more than one. A competition because winning is all that matters in life. And that's not martial arts. Martial arts is not a competition. You know, and people just don't understand that. You know, they're just so used to competition that they just don't understand what art is. You know, and then two, a business. You know, and that's very true. I mean, it's like, how could a, a martial arts school be open and operate in a commercialized context without turning into you know, something like a business. You know, I mean, it's it's very, it's extremely difficult because actually, it's not extremely difficult. It's almost it's it's not even it's not even lawful to operate a martial arts school. You know, without following the business model. You know, what I mean, like, like you're governed by state law you know in accordance to how you run your business and you gotta follow their guidelines you know so essentially the law forces martial arts schools to turn into a business you know but the way that the the martial arts schools operate and the business is operated um, you know you have to work within the context of the law and and try to do your best to educate about the spirituality and the martial arts that's missing in pretty much everything that you see out there. You know. And this guy mentions, you know, he went back to that karate school and what the teacher is just obsessed about the MMA, you know. All the sense they seemed to go on about was MMA this, MMA that, you know, and that's just sad, you know. I mean, it's really, the fact of the matter is, you know, if that's what the teacher is promoting, then that's what the students learn. And it just becomes like a, becomes a domino effect. It becomes like a virus that spreads out to more and more people. You know, you got one teacher that that's all he cares about, and then his 500 students or 200 students are all just focused on that, you know. And that's that's not martial arts. You know, the karate school or whatever just turns into, like, a fight school. You know, that's pretty much what it ends up happening. You know, he just mentioned something really, really, um, you know, insightful. You know, he says, you know, martial arts, is, you know, part religion. It becomes a part of you in daily life, not just something you do a few hours a week. It should teach you about yourself and other people, make you humble and gentle, teach you discipline, self-control, self-realization, appreciation. You know, and um, about Steven Seagal, he says that Steven Seagal is a walking contradiction. And it's sad to see, when, see someone you have respect for embarrass themselves in the way that he has. You know, and um, I see that, you know, I, I dislike Steven Seagal to a huge extent. Compared to what I'm going through, 
I could maybe understand in a way of where people could view me the same way. You know, that I'm, you know, because they, they, you know, people in their minds, it's kind of set for them to believe that, hey, you know, a spiritual person wouldn't speak the way that Freddie speaks. He wouldn't be aggressive. He wouldn't be violent. He wouldn't be, you know, speaking negative about other people, trash talking. And then they could put me in a negative light, just like they put Stevenson Gold in a negative light. So it's, it's, it's very difficult. It's very difficult in general that when people, they look up to you and then they want you to live according to their standards. Now, I don't do the cage fighting. I don't do the MMA. But sometimes I swear. Sometimes I'm aggressive. Sometimes I poke fun at other things, other people. You know, and I communicate in a way that in my eyes is is a w an artistic and creative way to to teach it's like a, a comedian for example teaches through humor and sometimes a lot of these comedians that are successful like Dave Chappelle or Chris Rock they swear a lot and they poke fun at all sorts of people and they they, they may speak they may attack certain groups they may attack their own group you know, group, and they'll attack, criticize, judge, poke fun, and it's a way to educate. It's a creative way to educate, and it's the same thing with some of these hip hop artists that that rap and they rap with aggression. They rap with energy and passion and emotion, and that's another way to educate. And that's what I see that I do is I. I draw different ways of educating people. Like, I could educate people, like, in a, you know, more calm and relaxed way. Or I could do it in more of an aggressive and argumentative way. Like, kind of like how a debate might be. Or I could do it in, like, like a st stylistic, like, poetic way. Or I could do it in a non-verbal way through the expression of the martial arts or fitness. Or I could do it through through film and just like editing certain films and creating like a storyline or something. Like there's many different ways to educate people. And I do my best to try to to give a variety of different ways. And that's the way that I see it.